Hello, my name is Ryan. I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Now, in this video, we're going to be turning our attention back to the uh, window base object that we created quite early on in the project. Um, we're going to be adding some nice animations to that. So let's get started with that. The first thing we're going to need to do is jump back to our game state object and go back to the start game uh, functions that we created quite early on. We're going to comment out this room go to next line, and basically that's going to stop us from progressing to the next to the actual game room. Now back in our rooms list, we want to make sure that we have the title screen still selected as our default uh, room. So this is the room that loads first. And let's just quickly begin our game to have a look and see where we left off with the window skins. So as you can see, the room immediately starts and we have a uh, a dialog box on the screen. So what we're going to do is, uh, like the traditional RPG style games, we're going to make that expand from the center outwards uh, to the uh, dimensions that the window should be. So the first thing we want to do is go to the object window base object, select add event and go to the create method. We're going to add a script to the create event of this object. It's going to say start equals false. And basically what this means is we don't want to start the animation until a user event has been called. Now in the step event for this object, we're going to add another script and we're going to say if start equals true. So basically if the object uh, has been initiated and we're ready for the step event to begin, we can uh, begin expanding the window. Now I'm going to paste in some code here that I've uh, prepared earlier and I'm going to explain what it does. So. The image Y scale is going to control our vertical scale on the image itself. We're going to be using the lerp function and that stands for linear interpolate. So we want to go from whatever the Y scale currently is to the target Y scale at a speed of 0 0.4. Now this can be a number between 0 and 1 and it basically determines how fast you get from where you are to where you want to go. Now because we're also going to be scaling on the Y axis, we, all, we want to move the image um, from the center position. So in order to do that we need to move the Y position of the window itself as well. So in order to scale the Y position we can't use the Y scale because that may be more than the number one. It might be uh, a Y scale of two or three or four or five. So we need to resolve that back to a number between zero and one. So what I've done here is I've created a variable called progress. Now progress is equal to the Y scale divided by the target Y scale. Then we're going to use the same linear interpolation function that we used for the y scale for the y position and that's simply y equals lerp. Then we want to go from the start y to the target y and we're going to move there at a speed of progress which is how far along the y scale has progressed. Now some of those variables that I talked about uh, they don't exist yet so what we need to do is we need to have a a user event so if we come to create an event select user defined we're going to call this user zero. Drag in a script, and I'm just going to paste the code in here that I've prepared earlier. Oh, there we go. Um, and these basically set those variables that I was talking about. So I'm going to explain what this does. So target Y equals Y. So what we want to do is we want to capture the Y position right where the window was created before we start playing with it. So this is basically just a storage for the Y variable. Then start Y is going to be the Y position plus a sprite height divided by 2. So we want to center this. So basically at this point in time the Y scale is going to be 0. So if we move the image down by half of its height it's going to be in the center of where it's going to start scaling from. And then we set the Y position to start Y. Then we move on and we set the target Y scale which is going to be what the current Y scale is. Then we want to set the Y scale to nothing. So basically we're storing the current Y scale in this variable and then we're setting the Y scale to zero and then we set start to true. So once these variables have been set up we set start to true and that will begin our step which I explained earlier and it should create a really nice animation for us on this base window. So let's give it a quick test. And nothing happened. The reason why nothing happened is because we need to set the uh, we need to call this user event. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this object from the scene, and in our game state object, I'm just going to create a temporary method that lets us sort of test um, our windows. So if you add an event uh, of global mouse left button, sorry, let's add a uh, global mouse left pressed event, 
and we'll drag a script in there. And I've just pasted in some code and I'm going to explain what we're doing here. So we're going to use the with event to basically allow us to um, create an object using instance create and then set properties on that object afterwards. So what I want to do is I want to create a window at the mouse's x position minus 32 because if we remember back the windows were 64 by 64 pixels by default. Same for the y position and the object that we want to create is the window base object. Then just for a demonstration purposes I've set the image x scale to be 1 plus a random number between 0 and 4 and the y scale to be 1 plus a random number between 0 and 2. Once we've set these variables we call the event user 0 function. What this does is this will uh, call that event that we created on the base window. So let's just have a look at that again real quick. User defined 0 and it's here. So basically it sets up these variables uh, based off the parameters that we passed in through that instance create. And then we call the start function which tells our step event to begin the actual scaling and moving of the window. So let's run that and have a look what that does now. now. Obviously there's no window in the scene but if we click you'll see the windows will start creating themselves and they scale from the center outwards. This is a really cool effect and we're going to be using this for all of the dialogues in our game. Now something else that we can do really quickly while, while we're working on this and while I'm here is if we go to the window base draw event we're going to replace this function draw sprite stretched with another one and I'm not sure but again I think this may be a professional only version so if you don't have the um, a paid version of Game Maker you either need to upgrade or do this in the sprite for the window that you created earlier. So what we're going to change this to is draw sprite stretched and we're going to use the ext function that's going to have extended methods. So everything is the same in terms of parameters until you get to the last parameters which are going to be color and alpha. So in this instance I'm just going to use C underscore blue for the blue color and I'm going to use an alpha of 0 0.3. What this will do is this will give us a uh, 0 0.3 transparency and the background will be blue. So it should look a little bit more like the traditional Final Fantasy or default RPG Maker skin. There we go. And now you can also see through the windows a little bit. That alpha value may have been a little too small so we might be able to just bring that up to say 0 0.5 or even 0 0.6 and have a look at that. There we go. So that's more of the traditional RPG Maker style uh, slash Final Fantasy 7 looking window skins. So once again guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. Um, if you have any feature requests, let me know in the comments and I will get onto those soon. Uh, you could also find me on Twitter. It's at RM2KDEV. So thanks for watching.